this spring today. <laughs> I, came in, I came in without a coat on. That's a right. good day now. All right, well, we're going to begin our service on page 230. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with our spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are made, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue with the Decalogue on page 250. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none of the gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Shall, thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy name. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not cut. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts to beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose son fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, but did not sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to your spirit, that as you know our weakness, so we may know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated at the proclamation of the Lord. I'm reading from Deuteronomy 26. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket, and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down to Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. 
So now I bring to the first of the, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God, in whom I put my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of Christ. Praise and give to thee, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight to the Lord our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There's a hymn that they, uh, they used to sing on the first Sunday in Lent every year in the church that I grew up in. It was 40 days and 40 nights. It's probably sung here too at some point, but, uh, but not recently. We found that there are uh, better options, so we typically leave, them on, leave it off the list. Anyway, one of the challenges that's presented by that, that hymn, aside from the tune, which is pretty brutal at times, um, aside from that, the, the problem is the, the truncated way that the story of Jesus in the wilderness is portrayed. The hymn just says, he was tempted, yet undefiled. Which, while true, is not the whole story. That said, it reveals something about how we consistently hear the story of Jesus' time in the wilderness and miss some crucial bits. After Jesus was baptized, after the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove, after God said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased, Jesus was full of the Spirit. And the Spirit led him into the wilderness, where he spent 40 days being tempted by the devil and eating nothing. Now, the wilderness in that area is a horrible place to hang out. It's inhospitable, 
uncomfortable and dangerous. Tack on that, on, tack on to that not eating, and you end up with a pretty miserable existence out there. But then tack on top of that the temptation of the, de of the devil, and you've got something that borders on disaster. The situation that Jesus faced in the wilderness was absolutely awful. And one that, that we just wouldn't want to find ourselves in at, at, at all. When we imagine this story, though, I think we mostly imagine Jesus and Satan facing each other, mano y mano. We imagine Jesus meekly spending the hot days and even longer cold nights praying trying to sleep, drinking water while his stomach growled, and just working to survive. And then on top of that, standing up to Satan, heroically fending off temptation. We imagine, probably, a bit of a close call for the Son of God, who, though he is God, is also subject to the limitations of human life. But we know how the story ends, with Jesus triumphantly facing down the tent. That's an interesting story, but it really isn't all that helpful to, to us, the people of God. We know all about temptation, and if we're honest with ourselves, then we know we're not like Jesus, and we're not that great at fending it off. When we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with temptation, it doesn't always go well, and that makes life less fulfilling and less whole and complete than it should be. The truth is, we're probably mostly good at fending off the temptation to do the big things. You know, we're not murdering, thieving adulterers that covet our neighbor's vacation home in Cabo and weasel our parents out of their home into a terrible bachelor pad so we can sell their house while the market's still hot. It's just not who we are. The truth is, most of that stuff really isn't all that tempting because the consequences are just too stiff. The real temptations are the small things, the stuff you can probably get away with. It's writing off another person in your mind because they, they think that different, they have a different perspective, or they act in ways that you don't agree with. It's concluding in your mind, if you don't, even if you don't say it out loud, that someone is, is just a fool, or there's absolutely nothing redeemable about them, or that they're a waste of time. We do that. It's holding back what we rightly own, refusing to, to live up to our responsibilities to the full extent and undermining the life and dignity of others. <clears throat> it's sharing a Netflix password or building an investment account refusing, and refusing to see to the needs of the community or saying the wrong things or viewing the wrong things on the internet. We do that. It's letting the wrong priorities take over so that you're too tired, too worried, or too stressed to be able to function faithfully in life. It's going to bed too late, or waking up too late to be able to pray. It's being too focused on your life to, to make room for others. It's losing perspective and losing touch with the rest of the world. We do all that. When we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with temptation, it just doesn't always go well. We sometimes don't heroically stand up to it, and sometimes we fold like a cheap suit. We just don't feel like we have what Jesus had. And that can lead us to say, why bother? Why not just pack it in and give up? Why not just set for a diminished, lesser existence? This all, though, stems from a, a, a problematic interpretation of the gospel. See, part of the problem with our interpretation of the gospel this morning and the, and the brevity of its, of its portrayal in, in the hymn 40 Days and 40 Nights is that we have this idea of Jesus heroically standing up to the devil alone. Mano y mano. And that is not anywhere close to the reality of the situation. Jesus wasn't in the wilderness alone. Sure, he didn't have any disciples yet, and he didn't have any family with him, and he didn't have any companions, but he wasn't alone. And we heard about that at the very beginning of the gospel reading, and probably skimmed right over. It said there, Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. 
What that means is that the Holy Spirit was with Jesus. We also know from the story that Jesus was praying. And he had to be praying to somebody. That tells us that, that the Father was with Jesus too, because it is the, the Father that listens to prayers and responds to them. Jesus was in the wilderness, but he wasn't alone. He had the whole community of the Trinity with him. He had all the power of the Holy Spirit with him. He had all the power of heaven itself to back him up. When he was facing the devil in his temptations, it was three on one. The devil didn't have a chance. I don't even know why he tried. There was no way, even with hunger gnawing at his stomach, exhaustion eroding his attentiveness, weakness eating his resolve, there was no way that Jesus could possibly fail because the fullness of God was with him. The Holy Spirit was filling him. The creator of everything was his strength and power. Out there in the wilderness, he wasn't even close because Jesus wasn't alone. And that's not just for Jesus either. Like him, we are full of the Holy Spirit. Like him, we are people of prayer to whom God listens and responds. Unlike him, we also have Jesus, who dealt with temptation, who knows what it's like to walk beside us and care for us. Like him, we are not alone. Our problem is that sometimes we forget that. We forget that the Holy Trinity is working in our lives, offering us courage and strength and love and life, the, the things we need to face the temptations of life and remain faithful. The only way that temptation ever has a chance is if we forget the reality of our lives and see ourselves alone and apart from God. Otherwise, it's four on one, and temptation can't stand up to that. And this is where that hymn, 40 Days and 40 Nights, actually gets it right. In the third verse, singing the hymn, we ask Christ who conquered to be our God. The hymn encourages us to, to turn to God, to recognize we're not alone, to face temptation not alone, but with God's help, with Christ as our companion and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what this, this season of Lent encourages us to do all the way through. It encourages us to remember that God hears our prayers and responds to them. That Christ walks beside us. That we're full of the Holy Spirit. It does that by calling us to repent and return to the Lord. By calling us to pray and give and, and read the scriptures. By calling us to face all the, the realities of life knowing that we're not alone. Knowing the, the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of heaven itself is with us. Knowing it's four on one. So a faithful, rich, abundant life is not just possible, but it is a foregone conclusion. This is a time for us to remember that we're not alone at any point in life. God is always with us. Christ is always with us. We are always full of the Holy Spirit. And for that, we can all say, thanks be to God. Let us confess our faith as we say. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and then in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made. Who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and 
ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, in the sermon, I did not mention, make mention of Ukraine or, or Russia or any of the, the horrifying situation that we're, we're seeing play out there. Um, and, and, but that said, it is, I know on our minds, and I know it's in our hearts, and this time in the service of prayer and intercession is the best time for us to remember the folks, of the people of Ukraine, and to remember all those who are involved and the lives that are being lost and the damage that is being done and, and all the rest, and to pray for wisdom and peace to prevail. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Todd, our bishop, for, for the people of the Anglican Church of Korea, the Diocese of Amazonia, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, for our St. Mark's family, for Marilyn Gillies, Shelby and Andy Hager, Mark and Janet Halvish, Paul and Janet Harris, Flo and Ray Hartley, Rich and Joan Hartley, Jason Harway, Carol Lynn Hart Richards Harway, Jamison and Natalie Hatch, for all their families, for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> for Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community of St. Clair Beach, for Tecumseh, Windsor, and all of Essex County, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather, and for abundant harvest for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, walk, or air, for the sick and the suffering, remembering especially Burl, Darlene, Jim, Lillian, Eric, Mark, Archer, Penny, Joan, Tim, Phyllis, Mary, Scott and Andrea, Anita, Chantal, Jen, Veronica, Armand, Lynn, Glenn, Karen, Danielle, Susan, Marge, Sully, Jenny, Howard, John, Mike, and Paul. For prisoners, captives, for those who suffer as a result of war, poverty, or natural disaster, for the safety, health, and salvation of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died, For all who mourn, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
remembering St. Mark and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To Thee, O Lord. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto Thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in Thy name, Thou wilt hear their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of Thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of Thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. For Thou, Father, art good and loving, and we glorify Thee through Thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is the true saying, and worthy of all to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation of our, for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon him, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring it to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Which please be seated. So many. <laughs> A couple of, uh, of quick items here. Uh, firstly, on uh, Tuesday, we are having our... Shoot, I did that again. Camera can't see me there. Um, on Tuesday, we are having our uh, parish council meeting. Um, and uh, so if you are part of the parish council, be there. Or be here, I should say. Um, and if you are uh, not part of it, please pray for us. We're, so we'll continue to make good decisions for, for the life of our, uh, of our parish family. Wednesday night is the first of our Lenten series uh, evenings. So they are taking place on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock, and they'll be here in person. All right, and we're, uh, we're looking at the Holy Spirit. So this week, we're just going to look at who the heck the Holy Spirit is. 
um, and then we'll uh, we'll sort of grow in our understanding and time together and all the rest uh, in our faith, and uh, we'll we'll get to know hopefully the Holy Spirit just that little bit better and to have a better sense of of the Spirit working in our lives and in the life of our world. So that's uh, going to be the next five Wednesdays at uh, at seven o'clock. Okay, so please join us for all of that. Midweek service, of course, ten thirty. Bible study on on Thursday is at ten a.m. and it's also in person. So. Um, good to be sort of easing back into uh, into doing things with actual human beings and uh, and not uh, not uh, with the intermediary of the, the computer, which is a, a good thing. Um, for the food bank item, if you can pick up some cereal, that would be lovely, and we'll make sure that that, uh, that get that gets off. I know it's getting crowded back there, so it's uh, going to need a, a trip to the to the food bank here shortly to drop that off. The other thing I want to uh, make mention of uh, that's not uh, on the announcement sheet that uh, comes out by email is that if you are um, interested in donating to support uh, humanitarian efforts uh, in, in Ukraine and, uh, and, and the surrounding countries that are looking after refugees and that sort of thing, the Primus World Relief and Development Fund is uh, um, working with, uh, with uh, international organizations to, uh, to make sure that that, uh, that that happens. And every single dime, when it's for something special like this, every dime goes to uh, the, the, uh, the cause for which you've uh, designated it, okay? So there's, there's no overhead, there's no administrative costs or anything else like that. Every single dime you, you give goes straight to, uh, to help those, uh, those folks that, uh, that are in need and are struggling. I was watching the, the news this morning um, and they, they showed, uh, you know, people coming up to, to cross the border and, uh, as refugees and there were dads there that were giving their kids kisses and turning around and having them back. And it's just absolutely heartbreaking and I can't even imagine doing it. So, um, along, if, if you can support them and support that, uh, that work with the refugees, please do. Um, and, uh, on top of that, please pray. This is, uh, this is a truly awful thing that, uh, that we're witnessing here. And I'm, I know God will hear our prayers and God will work in the world and uh, that, is our, that is our hope. Okay? Alright, why don't we stand up and then we can uh, do our dismissal and we can make our way back. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.